Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. We're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop. And today we're going to be pulling on an electronic speedometer to show how easy it is and so that uh, you can send it out and have it fixed for yourself. So this is a pretty nice car I restored for a customer who passed away and then uh, gave the car to me. So uh, it's a 1980 Silver Shadow 2 federal car, which means it's carbureted. Um, and it shows 33,000 miles on it, which I'm pretty sure is true. So the speedometer, electronic speedometer, is right in here. It's not hard to find. Uh, but to get it off, you want to pull this wood piece off. What I generally do, there are these little leather finishers down here. like to get stuck on it when you try to open it. So there are two screws. They're, they're uh, Phillips type head. I usually unscrew them a bit. One over here. Let's see. I have light. Let's try this. Let's see if it'll stick to anything. How's that? Yep. That, does that work? All right. So, so what I do is I don't take them all the way out. You can if you want. I do that, and then I just kind of gently pry it down. As you can see, the wood looks different under there. There's a like a little step. And it's very, very common for the leather to stick to the wood. So you want to be gentle. Uh, this, this car has all been all the way apart more than once. I have been very intimate with it. We painted it back, I think, in 2012. So that paint process, I had every piece of glass out of this, the window frames, everything. Um, there we go. I See how I pulled that down? We'll undo those screws a little bit more. Uh, there we go. Now there are three machine screws that are kind of brown colored on this that hold that on. I noticed on mine, Ryan, that the, uh, the uh, screw runs three to nine as far as that groove. Is that pretty much standard for Rolls Royce to align those? What do you screws? mean, the position? Correct. Like I said, it's nine to three. Oh, that's fine. The key with any screw that holds a wood uh, trim on is to not over tighten it. And crack. So if it's not lining up the way you'd like it, I do not recommend you keep tightening it till it does. Yeah. Because you will split the wood. So this, this unbelievable, uh, I don't know, attention to perfection on lining up the screws I think is unwarranted. Some people seem to think that it's better if they all line up. It sure it looks nice, but to the detriment of breaking something I think it's kind of asinine. But that's just my opinion and I've got plenty of them. You're welcome to ask at any time. Alright, so there are three screws. As you can see they're kind of brown colored and they've got a finishing washer. Those are the correct screws for this application. All right, and they are machine screws. So they actually screw into a metal threaded dash, not a, uh, like a sheet metal screw. Now, you gently pull this out. Now this one came out easy because it's been out more than once. Um, and that's how that's done. As you can see, on the, this has a metal dash. So this has the machine screws then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Huh? How simple it is. Yeah. All right. So the speedometer itself is held in originally with four sheet metal screws. There's one more down here. Now, me being a little bit lazy, when I take something out and I see a screw that if I have to take half the car apart to put back in, I think, well, that's kind of stupid. This, this speedometer is not going to go anywhere with three screws on it. There's no torque or tension. So these little screws here, also Phillips, and they should be the Torx style, which I'm not going to... You said this is an electronic speedometer. Yes, Do it is. Do you need to take the battery and disconnect it from the car while you're working on this? Well, if you read any British repair manual, the first thing you do is disconnect the battery. Okay. Uh, I. This does not have any power to it until the key's on, so I think you're fairly safe if the key, if you don't turn the key on, 
but you won't short anything. Okay, so we got these little sheet metal screws here. This is where a really long screwdriver comes in handy because you can navigate it, you can hold the tip, and it's not going to go off on you. Put that right there. And this type of speedometer was used on the Shadow 2s. Uh, Spirits and Spurs up till about, I think, 88. And then what was the difference? After? Then they went to, uh, the, if you have a little panel in the center here, it's called a DIP, Driver's Information Panel. Um, then that's a whole instrument cluster. You don't want to mess with that. This is, uh, so this, as you can see, it, it's, uh, it's coming free. So right now, here's where we run into a problem. See, it's cockeyed and it's hitting this. So some cars you can sneak it out, some you can't. So I'm gonna pull this upper steering column Just this cover to get some more freedom here. There should be a couple of Phillips screws. I'm doing this by Braille. Is the I column adjustable? Why. I don't know. Huh? Is that steering column adjustable? No. Ah. No. If it were adjustable, that'd be nice. You could just yeah. tilt it down. Okay, so here this is going to have a little machine screw. Now you can force it out, but you're going to scratch the plastic on here. I'd rather not do that. Even though this is my car, I'm afraid to work on it and drive it. Because it's so nice. It's a, you can leave that back up there, that's fine. So now this should kind of, if you take this gear lever and get it down a little more. There's that cover I pulled out, as you can see. This is a plastic cover. It's delicate, so don't ever force it. This is what this is what holds it on there. Ronnie, you took mine out once and it rattled it, and then you played with it and got it straight. Do most of these tend to rattle after they've been taken off and reestablished on the car? There is the potential for new rattles whenever you take anything that's been a, together since new. Um, Can they it's be not on? always the case. And you are particularly sensitive to that. I am. Yeah. Which always makes me hesitant to even work on your car. So take that in mind. It's a Rolls Royce. <laughs> next time you, when you drop your car off next week, please don't ask this question again. There's a potential for rattles, yes. Hopefully we don't have them, but there is a potential. Okay, so now, one thing you want to watch out for, okay, so this is where disconnecting the battery is important. There's there's a wire up here, this, this gear shift lever, this little thing right here, tells the transmission what gear to go in. That's hot. Now I have the battery disconnected on this because I got the doors open, I don't want it to go dead. But if you touch this metal against something that's hot here and the other metal, it's gonna short. You're gonna get sparks, you're gonna freak out, and probably break something because you'll react. So it's always, see how much easier that comes out? All right. So now we get into the very important part, okay? Being a Silver Shadow 2, the odometer has probably quit once, okay? So this has been out. Uh, so what I do is you've got the, the three important wires. You can see there was a uh, little light wire. These are all different lights for in here. One is a, you got two indicator lights, these two green ones, I think. The red and white wires are the instrument lights. So I, rather than undo all the wires, I just undo the bulbs. Okay, there's that. There's always one. It's a little tight. And then you have the three other wires. Now if you take, just pull these wires off, send it out, get it fixed, put it back in and forget which wire went to which. If you hook them up wrong, you'll burn it up inside. So I just usually take a Sharpie, and what I did here is we've got the one wire, it says RG. That stands for red and green. B is black, and then W is white. And there you have it. So the reason I don't recommend, other than the, 
did anybody try to replace the gear themselves? Is first of all, you, you scratch anything in here, it's going to be permanent, and it's it's expensive to get this fixed. But also to get inside to change it, you have to take the face off. And as you can see, this face, it's been folded over. When they've never been apart, it's nice and smooth and painted. You've got to gently prise that all the way around to pull that off. And then you've got to pull his face off without touching it and damaging it. Then you've got to get that little electric motor out there, change the gear, and then put it together and hope it works. So I send it to a speedometer repair. Most reputable ones, um, I know local ones, that's not going to help people around, uh, around the world, but what you do now is you find your speedometer repair, you wrap this up in bubble wrap real nice, put it in the box, and you ship it to them. You pay them, they ship it back, and then you put it back in. Any questions? I'm sorry? Who's the manufacturer? Uh, this is a Jaeger. Yes. And on here, the only thing you'd want to fix is the gear, you say? What happens when there's, there's the miles have to accumulate, okay? And this, typically what happens when the, the, the plastic gear breaks is the speedometer reads. You can tell your speed, but the miles never change. And that's, that's, that's what usually is the, the problem. That's, so, like I said, I got an email from somebody in San Francisco this week asking about fixing the speedometer. I told them where to go up there to have the speedometer fixed and then they said, well, how do I get it out? Who do I take it to for that? So that's why we're doing this video. And then you said because it's a silver shadow too, it's probably been out already. Is that because they Well, failed? because the plastic gears with age fail. Especially a car that sits around a lot and then the elements get to that old plastic and then as soon as you start driving it again, it's it, it, it it gets stuck and pop and just cracks. Real common problem. And to find a speedometer shop, what should you look for? Does he have to be a specialist for that Do you gear have, part? I, I always recommend if you're in the club or you have access to the club, talk to a club member. They usually have resources. You can talk to National. Um, there's, you know, I have a local guy, but there's also a guy in LA and there's. They, there's a guy in Palo Alto. That's that's who I sent that guy to. So there's 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 specialists that do this kind of stuff all over. Ronnie, what about the mechanical speedometers? Mm -hmm. Like they're the on a shaft drive off the off the engine. What about them? Well, I mean, who who can restore these? Typically, any instrument shop or speedometer shop can restore those also. Really. This was just a question about the electronic speedometer. And uh -huh. this, the odometer is a very common problem to fail on these. A lot of times the mechanical speedos, you'll have a cable break, you'll have a gear at the transmission brake, or you will actually have, they have little pop metal gears and, and it turn all these numbers in here and they will fail. Yeah. Okay. And then on here, is there any danger when the person takes it apart that the odometer will reset? Zero, 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 or anything like that? The speedometer shop will generally not change that mileage. The reset, the trip one, should reset. And what they'll do is once they repair it, they usually put a couple miles on it to make sure it's going to work. But as far as resetting to zero, a lot of people that restore cars that don't have the full six-digit odometer will reset their cars to zero, but it should be stated if it's sold, that it's been reset. Ronnie, if the, these are problematic as far as the plastic gear, why wouldn't they use a metal for durability? Because they want to sell cars. They don't want them to last forever. Plastic is much cheaper. The noise, maybe? Mm, you know, I don't know about that. It's much more expensive to cut a gear out of metal than it is to cast one out of plastic or inject it more. Much cheaper to. That's why the cars are all plastic popped together, because it's cheaper to manufacture, it's cheaper to build, and that's just why. It's, you look at a Silver Ghost, and everything is made out of brass and machined, and, and it's just like a piece of art. But that's labor intensive. It's, it wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to sell a car for what it would take to build it nowadays.
And when you get the spin on is it a good idea to just change all those bulbs so it's fresh? It's a good idea. You can change bulbs if you like. Um, you can check them. Um, so, yes, it's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all.